On this episode, we're reviewing The High Performance Habits by Brendan Bouchard, right now. Who is Brendan Bouchard? He is a high performance coach that works with entrepreneurs, athletes, and A-list celebrities. It took him three and a half years to prepare this book. Everything in here is backed by statistics and research. It's just amazing. Now, after he did his three and a half years of research, he realized these high-performing people stay at this level because they do six habits. And I'm gonna talk about these habits. The first habit, seek clarity. And I love this one. Because if you ever wanna succeed at anything, you have to have clarity of where you're going and then how you're gonna get there. But if it's not defined, it's never gonna work out. And one of the things he says is your future for. So think of yourself, What do I want to be with myself? Who do I want to become as a person? What skills do I want to acquire? What do I want to be in my social environment? And what do I, what kind of service do I want to give to the world or just any type of service? So if you define those things, it's going to be so much easier to go get it. As well, he talks about in this part to really look after what emotion you want to feel. So do you want to live in a state of happiness, of joy? Do you want to be sad or whatever the case is? And if you set the intention for everything you're doing of, I'm going to be happy, I'm going to bring the joy and I'm going to live a life of contribution at this specific moment, it's so much easier to attain it. The second habit is generate energy. So if we're trying to accomplish anything that is in high performance level, that's going to take a lot of energy out of us. So we need to bring more of it. And he gives a couple of tricks of how to do that. The first one he talks about, which I love, it's the transition from one activity to another. So imagine we're writing our emails and we're writing our emails and it's the end of the day, it's the last thing we're doing and we're done our emails. Before leaving or before getting to our next activity, close your eyes and just say, release, release. And you're releasing the tension from before what you were doing and getting ready for the next one. You're setting your tension for the next activity, which imagine is going to your home. And then once you're there, you're putting yourself of how am I going to be the best person for my family? And then you're already setting your intention. And then once you're there, he talks about bringing the joy in any state or anything you're doing. Bring the joy. Once you think about bringing the joy, you're going to be so much happier in everything you're doing because you realize the small things in life just bring joy as well. Everything. There's just joy around us everywhere. We just have to open our eyes towards it. And the last part in this section is obviously a healthy life. So we know about it. If you want more energy, you have to eat healthier, you have to exercise, and that's going to help you on every sense of the way. Habit number three, raise necessity. So one of the things he talks about in this section is before you sit down and work, ask yourself, who do I need to bring my A game for? Is it a boss? Is it a colleague? Is it my teammates? Is it maybe the cause that I'm trying to serve? Because if you sit down and you try to think of who do I need to bring your A game for, you're so much more likely to bring your A game during that activity or during that moment in itself. The second thing is affirm your why. So why did I start what I'm starting? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And by you affirming it, it just refreshes it in your mind because sometimes you know the why and then you start doing the activity gets hard and you kind of forget about that. So affirm it loud and proud very often. And the last part in this section He talks about leveling up your squad. So we've all heard this before. The people you hang around with will dictate what kind of person you'll become. So check around you. Are you hanging around with some negative people that are pulling you down? Or are you with some positive people that are helping you to grow and push? The fourth habit, increase your productivity. So if you want to accomplish anything in life, you have to be extremely productive. One of the things he talks about is to increase the output of the things that matter. So concentrate on what is going to give you the best value for your time. What is going to bring you the most importance? Don't think about the other stuff. Get the things that you need to get done. As well, in this section, he talks about set your goals. Once they're set, what is the five moves I need to do? What are the five steps I need to do that are going to get me closer to that goal? And start concentrating on those steps. And he even says, think about five skills that I need. What are the five skills, once again, related to the goal or related to the work that I need? Once you find those five skills, work on them obsessively. Become a student of the craft. And once you pick them up, it will be easier to attain your goal. The fifth habit, develop influence. One of the things he talks about over here is teach people how to think. 
And how you could do that is you ask them questions such as, what do you think of yourself? What do you think of others? What do you think of the world? And if you get them to ask certain questions like this, they start thinking about it. And another thing you could do is help them grow. So that's the second part. What you could do to push them to grow, to become better, to get out of their comfort zone. And the last part is show them the way. So don't only talk the talk, but walk the walk. So whatever you're saying, whatever you're preaching, you have to be able to walk it so people could see and get inspired and follow you. The sixth and final habit is demonstrate courage. And the first thing he talks about over here, which I love, is honor the struggle. Whatever you're gonna do in life, there's always gonna be a struggle period attached with it. Honor it, understand that that struggle is teaching you to get better. And if you look at it that way, it's not gonna be as bad. The second part is be true to who you are. Talk about your ambitions. Don't think about, oh, my ambitions are too high, let me not say it because other people are gonna belittle me and pull me down. No, be true to who you are, talk about that. And the final part is find someone to fight for. So find what is your why, who am I fighting for? Is it a person, is it my wife, is it my kids? Is it a cause? Once you have that in your mind, it's gonna be so much easier to work and then strive to get what you're going after. Man, oh man, did I love reading this book. It was amazing. This is one of the books that I'm going to reread and reread and reread. Like I said, everything that he talks about over here, there is a research that backs it up. So much so that the 40 last pages are all the researches that back up everything that he says. So it is amazing. The six habits that we just listed was a short version of them. So I definitely suggest you guys to go check it out. The Amazon link will be down below. So go pick it up and let me know what you think. I'm gonna leave you off with this, with one of the things that the author says, did you live, did you love, did you matter? Hello guys, thank you very much for watching another video once again. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and share it with all of your friends. If you want to get a more in-depth look into my life, here are some social media platforms that you can do that. And I will see you in the next video.